Why hello everybody, welcome back to Z.exe, and we are talking about none other than the good old Diablo game. Now, I have not had, admittedly, much time to play this game this season, uh, good old season 8. But you know what? Season 8's left a sour taste in my mouth, unfortunately. And meanwhile, while I'm talking to you guys and venting about my season 8, I'm going to run some bounties so I can get my class specific legendary materials. But anyways, this is super fucking loud. Chase. Anyways, season 8 has left me kind of feeling empty inside and this is why. It's exactly the same thing again. What were you thinking Blizzard? Like, hey man. We're like successful and stuff. Let's not even work anymore. Eh. Who needs to work? We're good. Exploding Palm for the win. Exploding Palm is fucking awesome, by the way. I can't wait to finish these, uh... These seasonal achievement bullshits so I can be astronomically powerful. Oh, baby. Look at that. It's fucking awesome. The Monk is awesome. I just need my, uh, my full set of gear. Juliana stratagem. Alright, we need to get inside of here. But yeah, it's like... You gave us nothing different. And I'm a huge Blizzard fan. Don't get me wrong. I freaking love Blizzard games. I love Diablo 2 the most. It was the best game, in my opinion, that they ever made, ever. Like, just... Period. Diablo 1 laid the groundwork for the series. It's just very dated now. And, you know, there's things that you can't do in it, like run, and that really annoys me. I hate when you can't run. But Diablo 2 was the perfected version of that. And especially when you're talking about the Lord of Destruction expansion, that game was fantastically good. And the thing I really enjoyed about Diablo 2 was the fact that you had to build your character without much of a safety net. See, when you would play multiplayer especially, you never knew what build somebody was using. And that made it awesome because it's like when you race a car or when you go to a car show... You might be like, oh, well, that's a Corvette or, or that's a Honda Civic or whatever whatever kind of car shows you like to go to. But it's not like you have no idea what's under the hood. It could have a hundred grand under the hood or it could have nothing under the hood. And it's all cosmetic. Like, you never know. And that's the exciting part because it's just figuring out like what somebody has, has done or what kind of build they're using or whatever. And then you might ask them, like, oh, well, like, how are you so successful with this? And what kind of items are you using? What kind of skills do you use? What's the synergy? Because in that game, when you leveled up, you picked your stat points. In this game, the game picks the stat points for you. There's no customization. Also, um, your abilities are just predetermined. Like, they're just there and you can switch them without any cost and unlimited amount of times there's no issues with it in diablo 2 it was not no such thing i think with patch 1.3 you were gave, given the ability once per playthrough so normal nightmare and then hell mode if you got to a certain point i really can't remember the mission but it would let you reset your skills one time and once you spent it that was it it was done um and so technically you could do it three times because there was three difficulties but that was it there was none of this oh you feeling like being a whirlwind barb today oh you're feeling like being a leap quake barb oh it's no problem as long as you have some gear you'll be fine it it was no such animal and that made it a lot more rewarding for the people who invested a lot of time in their characters and uh, farming for items and all that kind of shiznat. Because you couldn't just pick it up 
and in two hours in one day be level 99 and have all the best equipment. It, it just didn't work that way. Now in Diablo 3, the level cap is, I mean, with Reaper of Souls, it's 70, and then you have Paragon levels, which go up to 10,000, which, I mean, like, the amount of time it takes to get Paragon levels after, I would say, like, 1,000, 1,500, is so long that it's almost pointless anymore to even try to be leveling up. But you can level up from 1 to 70 with, like, a brand new season in one day, like, no problem. Especially if you're doing a four-man run, it's even faster. I'm talking like solo. It's really not that hard. You do not have to invest a lot of time in this game, which I guess it's more of a friendly to the casual gamer. But Diablo 2 was more of... You could play like the normal and maybe a little bit of the nightmare as a casual gamer. And if you were serious, you would be smashing through nightmare and be playing on hell difficulty. And... I like that. Like, this game has a lot more difficulty settings, for sure. Because you have all, like, the torment levels. And they are hard. D don't get me wrong. It's not like the game has no challenge. This game's greater rifts are some of the hardest shit you ever see if you play it on super high difficulties. But it's just not the same. Like, like I was saying, um, if... If they make an expansion, I hope if they increase the level cap, they don't do it like they did with WoW. Because the power scaling was atrocious. So basically, what you do, what you what experience you're ruining for the player, if you do that in a game, is I don't care about level 1 to 69 right now. It makes no difference. I don't care what skills I'm using. I don't care what equipment I'm using. I don't even care what fucking color it looks like. It doesn't matter to me. Not 1%, because when I hit 70, everything is so much better. All the sets are going to be maxed out. I don't care in any way, shape, or form about anything, because it doesn't even take long. It's not like I'm going to be at 69 for, you know, multiple weeks or days grinding away to get to 70, the final level. It, it, only, it only takes a little bit. It's, it's like no effort. So I think that... Diablo 3, if they do do, if they do do an expansion, they really need to like pay attention to the downfalls of this game versus its predecessor because the predecessor still has followers this day playing it. And I would be playing it if Diablo 3 did not exist. Um, and sometimes I even think about going back to Diablo 2 to be honest. It's a fantastic game. And this game versus that, it's just a different feel. That game is very rewarding if you put in the effort and time with all the rune words, with all the like big high-end uniques. Oh, that's another thing. The uniques in that game are way fucking harder to find. And this one's like the, oh, it's okay, little Johnny. We'll hold your hand the whole way and you'll be, you'll be pro status. I don't know. I wish that they would go slightly less casual and slightly more hardcore. Now I know you got your leaderboards, you got them greater rifts like I was saying. It just doesn't feel right to me. And I it's hard to nail it on the head, but I hope that they do decide to do a sweet expansion. And I hope it's awesome because if they can redeem a couple of the bad things, this game will be nigh flawless. It it will be very very good. Um and just so you guys know, I am a massive fan of this game. It is very fun. I'm not knocking it. You know, I'm not saying, oh, well, if you play Path of Exile or Grim Dawn, it's going to be better. Like, no, that's not what I'm saying. Um, I I will pick up Diablo over most things pretty much every time. I played Titan Titan Quest, all all the uh, like kind of Diablo-esque games. And they're cool, but it's like, you want the original. The original, awesome action RPG dungeon crawler. It's so fun for some reason. And it's such a community. The people who play Diablo, they can talk about it for freaking hours. And they're so into it. Even people who I, um, I like, know in real life, some people either are really into it, and some people are just like, eh. 
And that's just the way it is. It's kind of like you either love it or you hate it. It's the style. It'd be the same difference if I uh, was talking about Call of Duty. I liked Call of Duty when it was Modern Warfare 1. Like, way back when I was, you know, in my younger years. I don't like the, the new Call of Duties, how they're all... It's the same thing. It's the same fucking thing. It has no story, and it's the same shit. Like, you do the same thing every time. You, you go out and you kill people and that that's about it. I feel like there's no real progress. Even though you rank up and shit. That's not real. That's not progress. You're not going to get a weapon. And I understand why that kind of genre you can't do that in. Because if, let's say, I played Call of Duty for 30 hours. And I got my weapon to be more damaging. And then a new player came in who didn't get the game on release day. And he's only played for five minutes he goes against me in a match randomly and i can one shot him with my pistol like if i shoot him in the toe i i understand why they can't do that but i'm just saying that game feels like no progress is made and i enjoy games where there are progress it feels like there's progress being made it doesn't necessarily have to be an rpg but it has to feel like I'm doing something. Like I'm making a difference. Just, it, it's a fantasy life. Like you want to you wanna feed that primal need to make a difference. As, as a man or as a human in general. It's just a thing that us humans desire. I, I don't know. Like when you're playing the Sims uh, in SimCity. You're not playing the fucking as a Sim. You're playing as the god figure that rules over them. It's, I don't know. It's just the absolute power thing corrupts absolute. I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm getting lost in my own words here. But regardless, let's talk about the cool parts that I'm hoping are in the expansion. I'm hoping that they drop two new classes. And what I'm rooting for is the Necromancer, which I've actually talked to one of my subs about. They were gung-ho about the Necromancer as well. And I think they should bring something like the um, the Druid back, maybe. They don't really need the Amazon because they have a Demon Hunter. And they don't really need the um, Assassin because they have the Monk. And they pretty much covered the other classes. The Crusader is the Paladin. The Barbarian is the Barbarian. Sorcerer is the Wizard. Um, there's, like, no real need to bring in any of the other classic uh, classes. Unless they bring in a totally new class, which it could be good, but it could be bad because it would have to be balanced with the other ones and be worth it to even try it in the first place. So, I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes. But, um, like I said, I hope power scaling scaling goes well. Um, I would like another, another act, and I would like the story to be improved over the first five acts. Not that they're bad, they're just not engaging stories like I don't know and I'm not a story writer so I don't know exactly how to suggest a better story but just just do better like Blizzard just impress me impress us all and it will really make the game that much more interesting to us um, but as you can see in the background I've just been grinding away to 70 because level 1 through 69 doesn't freaking matter uh, <laughs> spoiler alert but um, I'm almost at 70, just so you know, and my seasonal, I'm on chapter 2, and everything is just, when I hit 70, I will be done chapter 2 immediately, and then I'm straight into chapter 3. And um, when I get chapter 4 completed, when I get chapter 4 completed, I will show you the build for Uliana Stratagem, and I'll make a video on it. And that way you guys can check it out and see if you wanted to make a monk on your season 8 and use it to build with Uliana's Stratagem, or if you'd like, you can even build it with the Shenlong Raiment build that I've already done before in the past, which is also kick-ass. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Later. Yeah.